Noise present on a 2007 Volkswagen Golf. This is a 1.4 TSI twin charged engine. And as you can hear at idle, it's rattling away. This is a noise that was progressively getting worse for the customer and it was becoming very evident at both idle and when test driven that this noise wasn't going to get any better. Probably going to get worse and the customer was extremely worried that they may have a breakdown in relation to it. So how I diagnosed the part that was the failure very quick and simple way. I had done it a thousand times before. It's using a long screwdriver and putting it on the body of the water pump assembly while it's rotating. So while I can hear the noise, you have to be very safe when you're doing this. You can't have it touching off any moving parts, so you just want to have it on the body of it. And then with the handle to your ear, you can hear the groaning resonating up through that screwdriver. So it's a very, very effective way to be able to diagnose noises. Like I said, I've used it over and over in my career and I was able to successfully know that this part had failed using that simple technique. After confirming what the fault was, it was just a case of getting the part ordered in and then fitting it for the customer. This isn't a step-by-step -step guide on how you install this part, but what I will be doing at the end of this video is sharing some in-depth information on how that water pump slash supercharger assembly works what you need to look out for if you're having some performance issues or cooling issues related to that part. And when I had it all put back together again, you can hear the difference. And when I had it all put back together again, it was time to bring it for a test drive. I'm just on the final road test with this vehicle now, doing an extended one, making sure that we have heat throughout the cabin. Um, circulation of the coolant is exactly where it should be. Also, making certain the performance is correct and no engine lights come on and double checking all our work. When you do a uh, extensive job like this and you have multiple pipes, components and connectors removed, always well advised to do extensive test drive on it so that when you give it back to the customer you can be certain that it is in good condition and ready for home now in this case the noise is gone uh, that was noticeable on um, initial startup so no fault there straight away no code stored on this one if you have a water pump assembly it has that magnetic clutch that runs off the drive belt to the supercharger that can also start slipping or failing and can have performance issues and can have codes flagged as well. So you may not just have a noise, you may have a performance fault with engine light on and codes, you may have no noise. You can have various symptoms for this fault. What I have hooked up here is the old water pump assembly that has been removed and I have it clamped in the vise. I'm going to do some demonstrations on this and give you a better understanding of how this functions and some of the faults that can be associated with this part. Uh, also some of the fault codes that's associated with it as well. First of all, how this one failed. What was the issue that this was removed for? It was the bearing type noise that's in it. So I'm going to spin this up first of all so you can hear that noise. So 
So what you could hear there is the groan of the bearing inside. There's also a bit of excessive movement on that pulley shaft and you can kind of see it in the impeller there as I'm rocking it back and over. What you also might notice is this spins independently to this one. So this pulley here runs to the supercharger. This one is constantly being driven for the water pump. So this drive belt is constantly moving all the time. So this is circulating the coolant through the engine, keeping it nice and cool so your vehicle doesn't overheat. This one here only becomes active when required. So depending on drive conditions, this will be commanded on and that's commanded on by a magnetic clutch. So what we have here is it driving all the time and then when commanded, so this is electronically controlled, this magnet will become active, it will pull it in and these will then rotate together. And what I'm gonna do is demonstrate that now as well. I have a battery here. I've it already hooked up on the positive side. This is the negative side of the battery ready to be clamped on. I'm gonna rotate this around and just watch this pulley link up when I hook it up to the battery. And that is how your supercharger functions on this design. So on this Volkswagen twin charge system, you have your supercharger, you have your turbo, and when the supercharger becomes active, it's commanded on, the magnet engages, and that's how that functions. So a couple of things to consider when replacing this item. This isn't just gonna be related to your cooling side, this is also related to your performance side. So on this one, I had a noise, the groaning noise that was heard, it was heard at idle, it was heard as you were accelerating, that was the bearing inside in this, that additional play, that was the fault in it. You can also have overheating issues, you can have an impeller which becomes damaged, detached, or you have a seal that's leaking where there's a coolant loss and that's gonna cause your vehicle to start to overheat. That is all related to the cooling side in the water pump. In the performance side related to the supercharger, you can have multitude of different fault codes as well. You can have performance issues. You may not get that as you get up higher RPM. It can be losing the performance and that can be because this isn't functioning like it should. This clutch can become deactivated. It can start slipping. It can become stuck where it's always on. There's a few different ways that this could fail. Some of the fault codes that I know are related to this is P109A, supercharger clutch does not open, so it wouldn't open at all related to that one. P10AA, supercharger clutch not closing. P2262, boost pressure not detected. And P10AD, magnetic clutch for supercharger open circuit. So they are a few of the fault codes and performance related issues you can have by this supercharger not working properly. And what I'm gonna do now is just take this, disconnect it, and I'll give you a close up with this front part disassembled of the magnetic clutch side of the assembly. So that pulley comes off and you can see some of the surface heat marking on the face that you have from it being engaged, turned off, on, off over large periods of time. And that is a breakdown on how these water pumps can fail, how they function and things to look out for if you're trying to diagnose this on your vehicle. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful and informative. If you did, please like, share, comment and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.